Hey guys, it's Monday morning and I feel like I'm running late. Um, in case you don't know me, my name is Michelle and I'm going to be putting in different bits going on throughout my week. It, it was quite a week. Um, some things were really productive, some things not so much. Um, yeah. It's Monday night. Chore of cleaning off the table was done. And we only have... These two things and one other thing that aren't done. I did a lot of dishes today, and my daughter did some. She did wash one of the cookie sheets, so progress. And I cleaned off the this today, so that's nice. So we have this pan and the cookie sheets. And then apparently a little handful of things right here. Progress. We're making progress, guys. Um, I feel pretty good about it. I worked on and off today, cleaned my toilet like I'm supposed to on Monday. Um, feeling pretty good. I'm going to see if, what I, if anything I can do for this. Like, I don't know if that's going to come off or if it's just grease stuck. So, yeah. I think most of it is just grease stuck on there, which means I can't do anything about it. Discouraging. Only a small bit of stuff came off. Swept it up. <sighs> it's gross, and but it's because it's in the kitchen. I don't know who put a ceiling fan in the kitchen, but it's just super gross. It was just discouraging. I was hoping to get that a little cleaner, but I'm not taking time to get all the grease off of that right now, if ever. It's Thursday night, and I just wanted to kind of give you, I guess, an update on how things have been going. Um, Thursday is mop day, and and I um I mopped my assigned place, and oh my gosh, I needed it so bad. Um, in the last couple weeks because mom was sick and things weren't getting done around the house. Um, and my 13 year old son mopped the bathroom and the floor was still gross. So I just went and mopped it some more because I knew it really needed a good mopping. Um, and I didn't say anything to him about it. I, I don't know if he really tried or whatever I just I wanted it clean so I went and did it um, I'm having a hard time with some things um, but some other things are doing awesome so I wanted to tell you a little um, I've had a little neighbor drama um, that was interesting and I really got to kind of look at how much I really cared um like it's kind of like caring what people think like I'm just so afraid to offend people sometimes that um I put up with treatment that isn't cool um, and this was a weird situation so um it's it's kind of interesting to evaluate that the places that I still show up as a people pleaser um, the places that I don't and how that affects people's opinion of me. It's been an interesting journey. <clears throat> Sometimes when you stop or when people, not just me, and I'm not saying you're that way or not, but um, in general, when people stop doing something, there can often be a swing to the opposite and I know for a while I was doing that. It was like I was so angry at a certain behavior that I would do the opposite of the behavior. Now, that doesn't always happen. It, part of it depends on um, what I do when I discover that's how I'm feeling. But I've noticed that I'm, I'm starting in some areas to kind of, kind of settle into a middle ground in some areas, but I still find myself very much caring and very much needing people to like me so it's really interesting to think about um more importantly what is going on and has really affected my ability 
to function as a human being today is um, we have some health issues going on with our dog. And it brings up years of trauma, um, years of... I uh, actually discovered today, because I kind of did a writing journaling project, that I've hated myself. And I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So um, realizing that that's what I was thinking was pretty interesting today. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I know that some solutions, one direction or another, will be in this video. Because um, tomorrow morning... We're going to the vet, and I'm scared to death. Um, it reminds me... So, I recently discovered this thing called Body of Nine. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Um, and the Body of Nine has nine physiological areas that people um, kind of function from. Three of them are kind of in the head region, three of them in the body region, are um, like chest region, and three are like on the lower torso of the body. Um, and the people who do this, their names are Susan and Martin Fisher, and they've done close to 8,000 uh, different people of different... Um, you know, all around the world, different kinds of people, different nationalities, and they have found that every single one of these areas, they've never found somebody who's not from this. Typically, um, so far they've found that um, a number doesn't repeat in a family until you've got nine people, um, and like we don't marry somebody of our same number and all these kind of things, and it's just kind of this part of our body that when we focus energy on that, whether it's a conscious effort or a subconscious effort, um, when we focus energy on that, it kind of gives us personal strength, um, helps us to be centered in who we are, and um, naturally you see babies doing these different things, that's why some babies crawl one way and some crawl another way, and, and it, they've noticed that it really um, um, says a lot about their natural number and they have ways that they can tell what your natural number is and everything um so my natural number the place for it is actually um kind of in the center of the back like the trapezius muscles and the different ones kind of make a triangle and it focuses right there and um some of the activation that you when you like consciously activate this stuff it's really funny to think about how often in my life I subconsciously were do, was doing things or my favorite thing um, a few months ago, maybe even a year ago, um, I did I participated in something that had an exercise where you would straighten out your arm and without bending it, you would um, kind of rotate your shoulder and it felt so good to my back. It became my favorite thing and that just went right along with my activation. It was really fun. And then my daughter, when she's hugs, she always has put her forehead against my forehead or my shoulder or something. And I didn't really think about anything about it, but she was aware of it because her activation has some, a lot to do with her forehead and it was, um, things that she naturally did. And so it's just really fascinating and it's been fun to learn about. And, um, the thing that, the reason why I started talking about it here today is because they talk about the people who, the three types who's, um, the number seven, which is my daughter, the number five, um, and I think it might be the number one that's right up in here in the throat. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the number one. Yeah. Okay. So the number one, those those three numbers, um, they tend to have shame that takes them out of being centered in who they are. It kind of is the, it, it's kind of the emotion that takes them off course. It's the one that they default to. Um, my daughter wasn't really sure about this because 
ashamed doesn't feel the same as shame but when we really looked into what shame is and what she feels she was aware she's like oh my gosh I really do um and then the lower three which I know there's the eight um and the two and the four are all in the lower abdomen and theirs is disappointment and um I've noticed I have a child that I'm um it's not been confirmed but pretty darn positive I'm like 98% sure that he's a two and I I've noticed that um he does default to disappointment and it's really hard for him and everything like that and so it's really interesting to think about well the energy for the six the three and the nine and I'm a nine um is fear and so I've thought about that and when I feel shame or embarrassment um and some of the kind of things that maybe you would think um that they say for up here it's different for me because um there is always this fear with it it's kind of weird to think about like when I get disappointed there's always this fear that it's not just that I'm disappointed but there's a fear that it will never I will never have it or it always goes into a fear and a lot of times it's a fear about whether or not people like me so that's really interesting to think about and I'm feeling a lot of that when it comes to my dog and how we've taken care of him um, he's half poodle, so he should be getting um, a haircut like every four to six weeks. And um, I know the last time he had a decent haircut was when my mom was in the hospital. And she died in um, April 2020. So it's been two and a half years. And even just saying that is bringing up so much emotion right now. Because I'm terrified of what people will think. I'm terrified of when I get, when I die and I go through judgment, I'm going to see just how everything has affected this dog and how it's affected everything else. And, and there's a part of me that just kind of feels like I'm going to get to heaven and be told, that I was a ho horrible, awful person, and here's some of the reasons why, and one of them is the way that I took care of the dog. It didn't matter that, you know, I haven't had enough money to pay my bills, like even the roof over my head is being taken care of mostly from charity. Um, there's still just, there's just so much fear of where I will end up, and it's crazy to think about. And so I've been dealing with that today. I feel pretty good that I was able to get my mopping done, but I still, I never made my bed. Um, other than the week I was sick and that one day, I have made my bed every day since June. That's exciting. So I've been dealing with depression. Um, I have been dealing with um, just... Um, so many emotions. Um, acknowledging the self-hatred was huge and has helped relieve some of it, but there's still a lot of anxiety about going tomorrow, all kinds of things. So it's been quite the day and that's what I'm dealing with. Um, also, interestingly enough, I have been doing, um, some healing work. And I was listening to, um, was listening to one lady and she was just talking and she mentioned when people complain a lot, um, a lot of times it means that they have a belief about things being impossible. And it just really like struck a chord for me and I just went, oh my gosh, that is so true. Cause I'm just like, oh, it's hopeless. Um, but like that word impossible just really hit home and I realized, you know, that's part of the problem with here feeling like 
what priority do I pick and there's so much to be doing and and realizing oh my gosh I really have believed it was impossible I believed it was impossible to get out of my financial situation impossible to um and there's there's a quite a few things that when I look at it, I'm like oh I feel that's impossible um I feel like you know to um get everything done in my house feels impossible especially when you when I feel like I've kind of got a handle on one section of the house and the rest of the house slides or um, as soon as I'm done something comes along and a lot of that is because I believe it's impossible and I really much really much I really believe that our beliefs affect our lives and when we believe something is impossible the energy will support our belief that's impossible if we believe it's possible and not only is it possible but it's doable and done and it's awesome and I've got this and all that if we can really believe that then things fall into place and and it gets done so it'll be interesting as I've been like really recognizing that to see how is it going to make a difference in what happens in my home will it make a difference um uh, one of the areas that I'm going to spend some time looking at because I want to really take this idea of impossible and not just clear, oh, everywhere I think that life is impossible or everywhere I think money is impossible, but like everywhere I think it's impossible to get my kids to help me. Um, everywhere that I think that it's impossible to um, get my house clean and keep it clean. Everywhere it's impossible to do all of the things like just kind of looking at it where everywhere I feel it's impossible to lose weight everywhere I feel it's impossible to um, have time for everything I need to do like really spend some time with it and just do some clearing work on every one of them it's it's been really interesting because when I think about my house that's how I felt <clears throat> do I feel differently right now I don't know. I, I don't feel like it's quite as drastically impossible, but I feel like there's still a lot of layers before I feel like it is possible. So I, it's different, but it hasn't shifted a lot, if that makes any sense. Maybe, maybe there's a part of me that feels like it's impossible to get over this cold. Um, yeah, so just a lot of things going on. And like I said, you'll know, because I'm sure I will do a video update tomorrow after I know what's going on with the dog. He's 12 years old, human er human years old, so he's not like, you know, a young dog. There's a lot going on. Anyway, that's my update for now. We'll see how much editing I do, how much coughing I can edit out. <laughs> I've had a really hard time. Um, the last 24 hours of I, my anxiety has been super high. Um, we had to take my dog to the vet this morning and currently um, they are doing a procedure on him. We weren't sure if they were going to put him to sleep or if they, what he is dealing with could be resolved. Um, he's 12 years old and um, the only way we could even do this is because my neighbor is paying for most of it. Um, but it's been like, even now, knowing what's going on, I'm still super anxious and stuff. Um, worried about him. And... Yeah. Um, trying to kind of get the house somewhat ready for Sunday when I have company. Hopefully this time company actually comes because we've already put it off once. Um, kids go to their dads tonight and I just, I don't know, I don't feel... Like, I feel like I need to be doing something because I'm feeling anxious, but at the same time, I don't feel like I can do anything. It's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. 
I keep reminding myself to breathe. Um, it's okay to breathe and calm down. It's okay. Whatever happens today is for the best and it will work out and it will all be okay. But it's been, it's been, it's been rough. Um, so yeah. Um, I am cleaning up a rug that the dog bled all over and hopefully later tomorrow we'll do some shampooing. Um, some carpets before my grandbabies come because they're really gross. We've had a problem with the dog peeing in the house. Um, it's been a problem since my mom passed away two and a half years ago, so yeah. Anyway, lots, lots to do, but um, I feel like if I can just plug a little bit at a time, I feel like once I actually know what's for sure going on with the dog, it will be easier to move forward in my life and in my day and my weekend. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, that's kind of my update for now. Bed made. Got that. Okay, so it's Saturday. I've pulled my area rugs up. I don't know if you see this patch right here. There's no carpet there. And we have a bunch of that. And my solution, because... Of my circumstances was to buy an area rug. Um, I have areas like this and like this, you can tell right there, um, and other spots in the carpet. Um, there are kind of spaces between the area rugs and around the area rugs that my dog has been a pain in the butt about. Um, but I have grandkids coming tomorrow, so I want it to get clean, so I vacuumed, and now I'm going to shampoo. Okay, guys. Oh my gosh. This was where one huge spot was. I love that cleaners happen. It is not by far a perfect floor, but it is so much better. Um, I didn't do the very center, um, but I'm waiting for the edges to dry and then I will put down the rug, the area rugs back and I'm about to do this haul. I've sprayed stuff. The poor little guy. He's got cone on and everything. So there's spots here and it's been a hard couple of years since my mom died. He's had a hard time going outside. I'm going to go in just to here and grab that stuff too. Um, so we'll see how the haul looks when I get done. And I'll do a little bit into here, a couple of spots. Um, but I'm not going to do everything that needs to be done in that room today. Okay, the floor is still wet. Um, I just barely got done. I wanted to do it while there was still light in this room here. So you could see how much better that looks. Oh my goodness, so much better. Now, oh, there's still some high traffic stuff I don't know how to do. Get done, but the stains um, are pretty much gone. And considering um, that one there didn't really want to come up, but I got the other, so that's good. Um, I have some other stuff I'll use on that. But, yeah, considering this carpet was old when we moved in and we've lived here for 12 years. The fact that I can get any of the stains up is pretty awesome to me. I'm going to add a little update here that I will put in at the end of this that I can take out if I included it. Um, the dog is doing okay. He's got a cone on. It's um, If he runs in anything, it hurts. And I'm feeling like I have to babysit him extra. And it's a little challenging, but it's okay. He's doing well. And I expect that things will get settled down pretty soon. So yay. Um, yesterday was Sunday, but I did a lot of housekeeping cleaning because we had company coming. My grandbabies were coming. My carpet looks and feels so much better from what I did on Saturday. Yay. Um, ended up cleaning the whole bathroom because it was just 
between all the things going on, carpet cleaning and different things. It was pretty gross. So I got all the bathroom cleaned. We got dishes mostly done. Oh, sweetie. I'm just coming in to report, re record the ending really quick. The dog was really loud and it was super high pitched, and I was worried about it hurting your ears. So, basically, I'm just finishing up um, today. I'm, I'm, it's like almost three o'clock now, and I'm like, oh, oops, today's bathroom day. We should look into that, see who's got what chores, and get going on it. Um, I don't know if that's a great start to the week or not. Uh, my video for my um, yarn channel because of everything with the dog and all the stress that was didn't get up until a few hours late until today but it is up um, and it's just I just I feel so tired I think that's it it's just taking care of the dog it has been so exhausting and then having family over super fun but also super draining um, and they just get so loud amazing to me that two little people can be so loud so just have some things going on hoping for a great week this week I feel pretty good about some of the things I got done last week <sighs> anyway thanks for watching I'll see you guys tomorrow